This is the 108th day in the Hamas-Israel war, and I'm Yair Pinto, reporting to you from Israel. The question that everyone seems to be asking these days is why is the IDF advancing slowly in Gaza? What's taking so long? In 1967, a much bigger war was won in just six days, and even in 1973, the biggest war Israel ever fought was over in less than three weeks. So why is this war taking so long? The answer is, it's complicated. The IDF is fighting in very complex terrain, engaging in urban combat, both above and below the ground. The enemy is fighting on their home turf and they've been preparing for this battle for 20 years. It's probably the most complex and difficult task the IDF or any modern army could ever accomplish. The IDF has just entered the third phase of the ground maneuver, which is expected to be longer than its predecessors. Let's look at the big picture together. To keep the state of Israel safe, the IDF needs to physically control parts of the Gaza Strip. One of the most important positions they need to take is the Nexarim Corridor, which is eight or nine kilometers long from the borderline near Kibbutz Be'eri in Israel to the Gaza coast. The width of the corridor ranges between one and one and a half kilometers between the southern neighborhoods of the Gaza city and the northern outskirts of the central towns. The IDF's role is to isolate the northern part of the Gaza Strip from the south, preventing the return of Hamas terrorists to an area from which they can threaten Israeli communities near the border. This is a very different mission from the maneuver deployments that the IDF has engaged in further south in the Hamas stronghold city of Khan Yunis. So what happens in this sort of mission? The isolation maneuver in the north of the Gaza Strip includes physically guarding the area so that Hamas cannot return to it. In order to do this, aggressive patrolling, surveillance, intelligence gathering and raids on positions where Hamas activity has been detected are necessary. This mission is complicated by the fact that according to the IDF estimates, over 150,000 Gazans are still living in and around Gaza City, which is the main urban center in the north of the Gaza Strip. Terrorists and insurgents always have it easier when they can blend in with the civilian population, moving freely and hiding in plain sight. Yet, the return of Gaza's civilian population to their normal routines, including the opening of markets, hospitals, and schools, is essential to maintaining order and is also a matter of humanitarian concern. If people are able to return to their jobs, homes, and routines, even under IDF security supervision, the situation may calm down enough for progress towards a post-war settlement. In fact, that's the only way there will ever be such a settlement. The IDF's main purpose in the Gaza Strip is to protect Israeli civilians. But we recognize that the civilians of Gaza also need to be first liberated and then protected from Hamas, who does not care about them and only uses them as human shields. However, in order to establish security, it is necessary to take measures that will be difficult and inconvenient for Gaza residents. This includes roadblocks and checkpoints, along with the monitoring of procedures to make sure that Hamas and other terrorist groups do not send operatives into the area to carry out attacks. Two major roads that must be monitored in this way include Salah al-Adin, a major road 
in the center of the Gaza Strip and the other is the coastal road near the beach. There are signs on these roads warning those who use it and there are checkpoints they must go through in order to be inspected to make sure they are not carrying contraband weapons, explosives or terrorist operatives. Every vehicle must be inspected without exceptions, including trucks carrying food, medical supplies and other humanitarian aids. These inspections make everything go much slower, but they've already resulted in the interception of several terrorists who were on their way to carry out attacks against IDF troops in the north of the Gaza Strip. Troops stationed in these checkpoints are giving special training on how to handle surprises, including suicide attackers. Another measure that might appear harsh, but which is necessary, is the demolition of buildings adjacent to the Salah al Adin Road. This makes it more difficult for terrorists to ambush vehicles moving along this road and gives drivers and soldiers a clear view of the area surrounding the road. These measures have already saved the lives of Israeli troops, including a detachment from the Iftah Brigade, which was able to detect and respond to an attempted bomb attack in the position they were holding on the Netzer Corridor only a few days ago. With the assistance of an Israeli Air Force drone, they were able to neutralize their attackers before the explosives they were trying to plant could be set up. This was just one of several incidents where the IDF's use of combined arms and tactics saved the lives of the soldiers and allowed them to quickly overcome their attackers protecting civilians and minimizing the loss of innocent lives. However, the Nazar Corridor is still a very active combat zone and there is no time for any of the IDF forces deployed there to let their guard down or take a break. But it's not just active combat that keeps these forces busy. Just last week, IDF troops did some police work, tracking down and arresting seven individuals who they believed were responsible for firing a large barrage of rockets at the Israeli city of Netivot the day before. Taking these terror suspects alive allowed the IDF intelligence corps to interrogate them to find out about other threats the IDF is confronting inside the Gaza Strip. Many such operations take place every day with the IDF eliminating and capturing large numbers of terrorists along with massive amounts of weapons, ammunition, rockets and explosives meant to be used against Israel. It is important to understand that most of the rocket launchers are hidden in the ground, utilizing tunnels and remote underground firing systems. This makes them very difficult to detect from the air or even from a distance on the ground. This is a very difficult process which can't be rushed. Now let's take a closer look at the city of Khan Yunis, the main area of intense combat operations for the IDF in southern Gaza. The IDF's activity there are focused on a relatively small area where Hamas has spent years building up its terror infrastructure. This includes a massive network of tunnels running in all directions underneath the city. Finding, inspecting and finally destroying these tunnels is yet another job that can't be rushed. This is for many reasons including the fact that Hamas set booby traps inside these tunnels when they retreated from them so that the IDF would have no choice but to go very slow and carefully through them. The operations in Khan Yunis are planned to expand to other areas, including possibly the Philadelphia Corridor running between Gaza and Egypt. If the IDF must attack this area to take control of it and prevent the smuggling of weapons into Gaza 
from the Egyptian-controlled Sinai Peninsula, it will require Egypt's consent and cooperation. Cairo has already made it clear that their price for this consent and cooperation will be the return of Palestinian civilian rule to Gaza after the war. Last, but certainly not least, we must remember that while the fighting in Gaza continues, there is a threat of an even bigger war on Israel's northern front where Iranian-backed Hezbollah terrorists are deployed and launching daily harassing attacks on IDF positions. 80,000 Israeli civilians have evacuated their homes in communities near this border and in order for them to return, there must be an end to the threat from Hezbollah as well. So, I hope all of this helps you to understand why this war is taking so much time. The IDF is making steady progress in completing its mission of eliminating the threat of Hamas and other terrorist groups based inside the Gaza Strip. To give credit where it's due, the Israeli Air Force and the Navy are fully engaged in this fight, giving support to the ground forces, including surveillance, but also including direct fire on terrorist positions. The armor, artillery, engineers, transport battalions, and all the other units and divisions within the IDF are working together to protect the people of Israel every single day. That's why the IDF exists, and I'm proud to be a part of it. When you pray for us, you're part of it too. So I want to thank each and every one who is praying and ask you to please keep it up. Please don't forget to pray for the families of those who have been killed and wounded in action. Sadly, I must inform you of another IDF hero who paid the ultimate price, Sergeant Shai Levinson, 19 years of age, from Givat Avni, a fighter in the 77th Battalion, Shar Megolan. He was kidnapped and murdered by Hamas, and his body was discovered today. So please join me in praying for his family and friends, and for the peace of the State of Israel, the peace of the people of Israel. Please don't forget to also pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And thank you so much for standing with us during these difficult times. Thank you for sharing the truth of what is happening here in the land of Israel so that the world will know who and why we are fighting.